Very fortunate to have with me Frank Spray. Frank, the poor guy, is just with me for coffee. He goes to church with me. We sell Tootsie Rolls, or we give away Tootsie give Rolls. Away tootsie rolls. Frank, thank you for coming, and thank oh, you for yeah. your service, all right? Thanks, and man. if you can put up with me at the coffee, what's another half an hour, all right? Okay, <laughs> right. I appreciate it. How about we start at the beginning. Tell me where you grew up. Grew up in Chestertown, Maryland. Oh, well, you're a Kent County yeah, man. Graduated from Chestertown High School. You went to Kent County High? Yeah. Oh, I might have coached against you, or when did you graduate? Uh, what was it, 1967? No, no, no. I was, I was sitting in Korea, so <laughs> I, I know I didn't teach you. Oh, so you, I didn't know you were Kent County. Yeah. Okay. Sports, theater, what was the uh, high I school? wasn't much into sports. Um, okay. I was a farm boy. I worked on farms. Oh, your, and, your yeah. family had a farm? Uh, a little farm, but I worked for other farmers. Oh, okay. Such, yeah. All right. So you were an ag guy? Ag guy, yeah. Now, did you go on to college after that, or what did you do next? Um, next... Um, I was drafted. <laughs> oh, 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 you were drafted. Okay. Well, you and I kind of did the same thing. I was a dummy. I joined, but you, oh, you were drafted. I drafted, uh, went in uh, April 4th, 1968. Day after my birthday. Well, congratulations. Oh. Sorry about or, that. Or the day Martin Luther King was shot. Yes, he was. I was in Korea when it happened. Yes. Isn't that yeah. Now, let me ask you. Walter Pauls told the great story, because uh, I didn't go through the draft because I had joined. Did you just un did it just appear in the mayor uh, mail, or did you know you were about to be drafted? Um, I assumed it was coming. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand. We all had to register for the draft at eighteen. Yeah. The minute we, we, yeah, I think you had a week to draft. Yeah. And after that, unless you got a deferment for school or something, you knew it was kind of like Russian roulette. When your number came up, hold on, Charlie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so Kent County High School. You were, now. How soon were you drafted after graduating? Uh, well, I graduated in June and, and um, went in in April. Oh, so you had uh, almost yeah. a year, almost yeah. a year. Okay. Uh, now, basic training where? Fort Bragg. Oh, North same Carolina. place I had. Okay, okay. Fort Bragg. Then went from there to um, Fort Polk and Louisiana. Okay, so advanced individual training. Now, is that 11 Bravo? It is. Oh, no. Now, tell everybody what 11 Bravo is. 11 Bravo is being a grunt. <laughs> that means infantry carrying infantry. again. Oh, you yeah. were 11 Bravo. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Now, since we haven't had anyone who was either 11 Bravo for Polk, I've heard horror stories. What was, what was it like, infantry school? Um, actually, infantry school was easier than basic oh, really? training. It oh, it was easier? Oh, okay. Yeah, it wasn't much physical. It was more uh, training with shooting and okay. you know, Getting used to weapons. And, okay. Um, how to dig a foxhole. Oh, how, how long was the advanced individual training? How many weeks in? Um, I think it was about eight, maybe Kind of like seven basic. Or eight eight weeks. Weeks. Yeah. Oh, you thought, and you, your opinion, basic at Bragg was tougher than Puck. Well, that's a good, that's yeah. interesting. Okay. Yeah. Any uh, horror stories from I mean, drill sergeants or anything? Let's go back to basic yeah. training. Um, or good stories, either way. Good stories. Well, I started out with one group, and I got, got a... Uh, Upper respiratory infection. Oh, why are you in? So why they was, set you back. So yeah, so yes. I, I had to. I was in the hospital for two weeks. Oh, oh And wow. then I, I got out. So then they set me back. They to recycled another group. you, right? They yeah, recycled so I, you. I was an extra long time uh, there in basic. Nobody wanted that. Yeah. Right? No basic training. I don't know how you felt. There was no freedom whatsoever. Oh no. No passes. No nothing. <clears throat> you were on base at Bragg. Now I was fortunate. In the middle of my basic training was Christmas. They gave us a week off. But other than that, there's no passes, no nothing. No, no. Okay, so you, you go to Bragg, you survive Bragg. Remember your drill sergeant's names? or No. Okay, that's right. I, to this day, Frank, maybe just because I'm a nut, I had a guy named Smitty, a drill sergeant Smitty. Yeah. And when I do my morning exercises, I do my push-ups just as he used to do. And I used to, this is for the drill sergeant. Okay, so you go through basic. You're 11 Bravo. So now you're still a PFC or E1 or... Um, E2 when I got Oh, so you got E2. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, where did you go after, I'm afraid to ask, where did you go well, after Pope? I went home for uh, leave. How long? They give you 30 days or how long? Yeah, 30 days. It's got a month. And then went to um, Travis Air Force Base and went to Vietnam. Went right to Vietnam. Yeah. So we got basic training, eight weeks, uh, 11 Bravo School, eight weeks. I go, you go home for 30 days and they send you right to Vietnam. Right. Okay. Well, they only had two had me for two years, so they. Okay, so they they're gonna, they're gonna squeeze that rock as hard as they could. Now, tell me about uh, 
So you get long been, where'd you land in, do you remember where you landed in? Um, Doesn't matter. I think it was Cameron. Oh, Cameron Bay, okay. Yeah. Huge, big base. Yeah. Okay. And what did they do to you? Uh, hung around there for a couple of days and then got on a truck and, and went to play coup. Oh, and you and I were both in, now you and play coup, what years? Um, well, I was only actually in play coup for like, well, I wasn't in play coup very long. Enough. Okay. And went out from there out to a fire base. Oh, they moved, obviously moved uh, you around. Black Hawk Fire Base. Well, just so everyone knows, I was in play coup 68, 69. So yeah. we're, so we're within a year or two. Same time. Same yeah. time. And so you, they send you, you get to Vietnam, takes a couple of days to process you, like you, you right. sat there and wait, and probably had either KP mm -hmm. or guard duty, some yeah. nonsense. Yeah. And they shipped you right to play coup. Yeah. Okay, now what, what do and we... And then I got a, you know, on another truck and went out to oh, the fire kept... base. Oh, fire base. Now, were you 4th Infantry Division? Yeah. Okay, you were. Now, where was the fire base? Um, I can't remember the name okay. of the highway, but, but it, was, it was north of Play Coup. Okay, now how far away? 30 miles, 50 miles, hour drive? Um, probably 20 miles, I Oh, think. so it wasn't too bad. No. I'm afraid that I was, uh, remember the Air Force Towers? <clears throat> I wasn't in Play Coup very much. Okay, uh, I was in the Air Force Towers. So tell me about the fire base. Now, that's a little different than what I had. Yeah, um, yeah. It was pretty small, really. There, there was uh, just a company there. Okay. Um, so or, we're talking what? How many men? Hundred men? Fifty men? Ah, uh, what? It, Less than probably a hundred and fifty. One hundred fifty guys. Okay. Yeah, but the one company was always out in the field. Okay. Or, or the, the one platoon was always out in the field. And, um, you know, the rest of them were back at the fire base. So they rotated you? Or they, well, we, there were a couple of different places. Where we, we, I went to the fire base, Black Hawk, and uh, we went road duty. We were uh, doing security on uh, the highway there. Literally trying to keep the highway open. Yeah. Is that road we duty? do the mine sweep in the morning and then go yeah. out and park along well, let's go, the Oh, let's go back. All of a sudden, I'm beginning to panic here. Mine sweeping. Now, we had one other gentleman describe what we're doing when we're mine sweeping. Uh, Basically, we, we walked along the road with a um, metal detector. And you're basically kind of doing like the guys yeah. are doing on the mm -hmm. beach looking for coins. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, same thing. Same. Now, what? Here's a 64,000 question, dollar question. What the heck did you do when all of a sudden, bzzz, when you found a mine? Yeah. Um, well, luckily, we, I never found a mine in, oh, okay. on okay. that se section there. Of course, it was paved. Oh, all right. So you're actually on a regular road. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, so we would, and then, and the, as soon as we got done that, we dispersed and sat along the road various points. And uh, protected the road. protected the road, yeah. Mm. Now, when you were doing this, were you ever attacked or under fire? Or not? not in that section there around. Okay, not around the, the base. Yeah. Okay. We went to, um, went from, we were there about four months, and then they shipped a, swapped our platoon with the platoon up in uh, Contum. Okay, I knew, so you so we get the play coup, they ship you out to a fire base, and for four months or so, you basically keep an eye on a highway. Right. Okay. Was your unit hit ever or no? Um, I don't remember anything happening okay, there. Okay. Did you ever yeah. get, here, I spent a year in play coup and never saw a play coup. Did you ever get into the town, no. or city? Okay, did I. I mean, yeah. it was this mythical thing in our base. Oh, yeah, there's a city there, and it has mm. stores, and it Never, we weren't allowed in there because yeah. it was dangerous. A couple okay. little villages is all I ever went in. Okay. And, now, did you run into the mountain yards at this point? No, we went up Contum, we saw mountain. Well, let's go there. Okay, so we go in, we're play coup, we're protecting a road, and then we go to Contum. Tell us yeah. about Contum. Um, yeah, Contum was a, a lot more activity up there. Okay. That's where I found my first mine. That scared the heck out of me. Ex describe that experience. Um, well, it was pretty obvious. It was a little square, you know, it was, it was off the road, and it was a little square block where I could see the soil was different. So it looked, it just fit, with eyes, it looked Visible. different. Okay. Yeah, you could see it. Um, so I scraped the dirt off and flipped the... Oh, you actually got down and you... Yeah. Yeah. Dumb. Well, no, okay. <laughs> We're army, Frank. We're <laughs> army. Now, yeah. again, is there like a... What's jutting out of the ground? I mean, is there a uh, trigger like, or when I say uh, Well, it was just this little board that was over top of it. Okay. And I flipped that off, and there was those bouncing Bettys, you know. Yes, the, yeah. Now, just tell everyone what a bouncing Those are, uh, um, they're still using them, and they're illegal in most countries, but the U.S. is still using them. But they're uh, parts of a bomb. They drop a bomb, and all these little things drop out, and they're 
personnel killers. They shoot bit like BBs or scrap. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they bounce up in the air, you know, about chest height and yeah. explode. They're, they're brutal, the results these, and bodies, right? Yeah. So but these two didn't yeah. happen to explode. They were just... They were you still... Po who... who act, I mean... I didn't poke them. Oh, okay, no. okay. As I, I, soon as I saw what they were, I got out of there. Oh, yeah. the, the, so I went and got the sergeant. Specialist, okay. Yeah, and he, he was the demolition expert, right. so he went back and uh, blew them up. Oh, they actually blew them up? Yeah. Okay. So that, how many times did you have that experience finding mines? That's the only one I really found okay. that way. Now, I drove over a couple of, of them. And they exploded? With, or no? With a, yeah, with a PC. Oh, well, explain and, and a personnel just, carrier. I mean, go through personnel all that. Personnel carrier is a, uh, um, oh, you see them on TV once in a while. Almost like a tank without the turret. Does that make sound? Is yeah, that close? Yeah, but they're much smaller. Yeah, yeah, different. And, that, you know, it's got a 50 caliber machine gun and two 60 mm -hmm. caliber machine guns on the side. Um, and, you know, theoretically, you could put 10 guys in the thing. So we you did got that. bodies stuffed in there with a weapon. And we the, did that one time. We stuffed 10 guys in there. Mm. And, uh, you know, it was terrible. Claustrophobic. I can't imagine you getting hit in the Walter mind Walter Paul's, uh, who you know from our, our coffee group, he described what it's like being in a tank with just three people. Yeah. I can't imagine 10 in a smaller vehicle. Yeah. But th usually it was just four of us. Okay. Or, or just three of us. The, the, the driver plus... The, four of us. Okay. The driver, the... the Fifty caliber right. and the two sixties on okay. the side. All right, and you actually went over a mine in one. Yeah, no. and uh, you know it was a personnel mine, so it just you know damaged the track. We got off and nobody was killed. Nobody was killed. Okay. Got off, fixed them up, and kept on going. Just kept on going the army yeah. way, right? Yeah. Now, Contoon, if I remember right, in sixty eight, sixty nine, in my years, that was a hot spot. I mean, well, we didn't own Contoon. It was yeah. VC and the North Vietnamese decided yeah. who. Went. Contact on a regular um, basis? Or? No, ne never happened so on a regular basis. So you're never in a regular it. firefight, okay. Yeah. Um, no, one time, uh, one of the platoons or, or got in a, in a firefight on a, in a village, and um, they came in and bombed the thing. One thing I remember very clearly about that, they, they dropped a bomb on the village, and this big ball of steel all jagged looking, came rolling out past this. Mm. I said, oh my God, if that had hit somebody, it This is what we're short. dropping. This was part yeah. of the bomb, right? Yeah. Oh my goodness, okay. But, so you're, now how long, were you, how long were you in Canton? Uh, about four months there. I oh, see, so four months, kind of slide, you know, road, now Canton. Uh, and the same thing, constantly checking the roads, yeah, checking the highways. Yeah. And, and we were finding more mines up there. Um, you know, one incident, um, Tet, 1969, yes. which wasn't nearly like Tet 1968. Right, right. Um, we were in Contum, and the base was occasionally getting rocket fire. Where you were, that, your home, when yeah. you say base, where you were yeah. sleeping and eating and etc. Yeah. showering type thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, and um, we were, I was there, they got a couple of rockets. Then um, we had a call, the captain said, um, he had gone out with the, the, the whole company went out, and um, he said, we need water out there. Well, we scrounged around. We couldn't find any decent water cans. It took... <laughs> I mean, water for people to drink. Yeah. The GIs yeah. to drink, yes. You know, we had the five-gallon cans, huh. um, but the ones we found, other than the one we normally use, didn't have any lids or anything, so we filled them up and took them out Just there anyway. Yeah. Sloshed all over the tank. But to get these guys water. They yeah. get dehydrated, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, the captain didn't like them anyway, because so. <laughs> they were open and, you know, so. Right. so uh, anyway, so we went up to this um, Arvin compound with a bridge there. Never mind, that's the regular army for the South Vietnamese, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. And then we went, um, everybody, the captain and, and everybody left, just my track and, and, and the mortar track were there um, to guard this bridge. And I guess protect the Arvins. Right. But um, so, you know, that night I was on guard duty. I, I pulled guard duty so much, I could tell you what time the moon was going to go down every night. Because it's you, like 50 minutes later every night. Right, right. Because of the. Now, when you say guard duty, base guard duty, you were guarding yeah. the base or just guarding the platoon out in the field? I was guarding, guarding this bridge. Oh, the bridge. I'm sorry, bridge. Okay. Yeah, no wire around us or anything. Um, so, anyway, the, 
I knew the moon went down, and you got no visibility then. No. And I could hear a little bit of noise on oh. the other side of the bridge. I had this old weak flashlight, couldn't see anything with it. Government issue. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the bridge blew up. They blew it up. Yeah, the other oh. end. Oh, so you, you'd heard that someone was doing something, and they said, yeah. you know, the bridge is blown up. Yeah. Now, what was and, that uh, loud noise? Scared the heck oh, out of you, didn't it? Oh, it was loud, yeah. Okay. It was a terrific explosion. Now, any many... contact with the people that were doing this, or they just hit and run? Uh, I think it was just hit and run. Hit we, and run. Well, me and the other tank, or PC, PC, we opened up with our machine guns and sprayed the area for a while. They had a um, Puff the Magic Dragon come in. Right. He and if there's a Gatlin gun on a ship yeah, flying yeah. around, putting a thousand bullets in an area yeah, like that's this. That's amazing to watch the oh. bullets spraying down from those things. And um, you know, that was pretty much it. Uh, in the morning, the, uh, the engineers came out. They were pissed at that bridge. We yeah. let their bridge get blown oh, up. So now the poor guy's going to have to do their job and build another yeah. bridge, right? I mean, yeah. you could have been killed right if the guys yeah. had to come across <laughs> the bridge or the explosion, right? Yeah. Yeah, lucky they didn't put it on my end. I was good. It's amazing yeah. how we all had our little areas of expertise. Don't mess with my microwave towers. Yeah. Don't mess with my bridge. Hey, guys, we're all on the same side. Yeah. Let's play ball but, uh, here. What were, let me go back, while you're in Contoon, living conditions. Were you in a barracks, a tent, or on the ground, sleeping and eating? Uh, we slept in our tracks, yeah. You actually stayed in the personnel carrier. Yeah, or, or up on the top, or, you yeah. know. Oh, so there was no barracks and no, no, barracks no anything you could sleep we, in. We liked it. We loved it. We got hot oh. meals there. Oh, you got hot meals. Oh, yeah. You were spoiled. And they had right. showers, too. Now, they were brought into you daily, or how did you get the hot well, meals? Well, they had a, a, a mess hall there in Contum. It was okay. a big base. Oh, okay. So it was a good-sized base. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they had an Air Force. So you got three squares. They were hot. Well, two of them. Oh, you only got two? Yeah. Oh, Lord, you, you, had, you did have a hard, tough post, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> I ate sea rations most of the time. Did you really? Okay. Yeah. In Pleiku, where I was, we were lucky. We did get three square meals yeah. a day. So you're eating sea rations. You know, tell everybody, what, what are we talking about sea rations here? Oh, sea rations. Uh, um, yeah, it, it's a little box. It had uh, a fruit in it. It had um, some sort of main, um, course, main of. course type thing, a vegetable <laughs> with right. some sort of meat, chicken or something. Right. Um, a little taste. pack of cigarettes. A little pack of cigarettes. Now, yeah. That was a highlight of my life. Frank, mm -hmm. I didn't smoke, fortunately, and don't smoke. The smokers, I could get all those. Remember the little desserts that came in the cans? Mm -hmm. I could get all those desserts trained. Oh, trade them. Anything I wanted, work, yeah. right? I was king of the... Well, I took up smoking. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> well, if I was where you were, I think I would have, too. Yeah. So you're in Contoon. You live in personnel carriers. You're eating sea rations, which is basically canned food. Yeah. Okay. And hoping the bridges aren't blown up, yeah, etc. Yeah. Yeah. The, the canned food was from, like, the 50s. <laughs> they were the all Korean dated. War. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We um, used to, the same thing. We had three uh, hot meals, but occasionally, for reasons I don't know why, we were given the little box with the sea mm -hmm. rations, which was a treat for the first couple of times. Mm -hmm. Remember the little caramel dessert and this and that? Yeah. After about a week of that, you go, you know what? No <laughs> way. No yeah, way. Oh, so you had sea rations twice a day. Yeah. Mm. Now, how about after, say, your four months you, how much? What, what happened after Canton? Yeah. Were you almost done? Well, I wanted to tell you, they, yeah, they did have a tank battle. Cause oh, you did fight A couple the, of days, I was there fighting the tank, but I was down there getting blown up on oh, the bridge. Okay. But uh, the, I did see them hauling a, a, a Russian tank down the road. Russian tanks, which they gave to, well, they gave to the North Vietnamese, yeah. who were using them. Now, these are NVA regulars. Yeah. Not VC, right? Right. Okay, so you were, and these are, just to the public, these are professional soldiers, so yeah. they know what they're doing and they know how to fight. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you actually, there was a battle going, mm, no yeah. way. So, anyway, it wasn't long after that, they, they shipped us, well, we drove over to the, the coast, got on um, ships, and went down the coast to Ban Rang, and um, spent about four months there. Um, totally different environment. It was well. People don't understand. Play coup. I used to wear a field jacket for a couple months at night yeah. on guard duty. Mm -hmm. It was hilly, trees, mountain yards. And yeah, let's go back. Did you run into the mountain yards at Canton? Yeah. Oh, river. Oh, you did. Tell, tell, yeah. tell people about the most beautiful people in the world. I think. Yeah, yeah. I saw a couple of girls that were beautiful. Oh, know, they, yes. Yeah. And they were the most loyal. They used to tell us when we were about to get hit. 
because they were on base, you know, uh, house boys, house girls, yeah. working in the kitchens, and they would say, "Gee, I'd be careful. You're going to get, you know, yeah. that's a, uh, you're going to get hit." Physically smaller than us, uh, kind Very of dark that, skin. Yes. Yeah. And now I hear most of the mountain yards are living in Texas. We somehow shipped them all over to Texas at yeah. some point and rescued them. Oh, so you, did you have any interaction with it? Not much, okay. no. Okay. No. They, were our, they took care of our billets and our food and stuff yeah. like that, but terribly loyal. And to them, if you gave them a carton of cigarettes, it was like giving them you know, the Eiffel Tower. I mean, it was amazing that you would do yeah. that. Because we'd uh, occasionally go to the Air Force PX, and smuggle them stuff like that. Yeah. So when you went back down south, let's go back down south. Okay, um, we're just still doing the same job, okay. looking for mines and and um, t security along the roads. And um, one night, one exciting adventure we had there: um, sappers uh, got in the the comp. Okay, now tell me, this is somebody bringing on a an explosive, right? The plant and blow the heck out of it. Yeah. Um, Actually, my platoon were, was up on a hill, and the uh, company was down here. And, and the, they got into the company. They blew up the, several tracks. Uh, guys got killed. Oh, they got to, oh actually, yeah. while they were sleeping in them, they blew yeah. them up. Yeah, and um, blew up the uh, ammunition dump, and you know some of our supplies got blown up. And um, anyway, we were up on the hill about a half a mile away. And they said, well, you need to come down here. So we. <laughs> oh, all no, this, thank you. No, thank you. All this down there. Well, by the time we got down there, they had gone. They're gone. So there wasn't much for us to do. But those darn shells kept blowing oh, up. The hardest, every every yeah, time they would yeah. blow up, my knees would give out. <laughs> it was like blow, oh, well, almost the, down to the floor. The you know? hardest thing I, I have explained to people, the people that were taking care of our barracks during the day, were our barbers during the day, were cooking our food during the day, at night, Unfortunately, many of them, not all, some of them became your enemies. We used to image it with tragic results both ways. Yeah. Well, we think that was something that happened there because uh, um, this guy, that, uh, a Vietnamese guy that was, um, you know, VC, and he came back and he was rehabilitated. And right. So he was our guide, so to speak, supposedly. And um, he happened to be on leave when that happened. <laughs> oh, it just happened to be. Yeah. We, we had a Mama Sans, we called them, uh, who was t taking care of some of the barracks. She was caught bringing on base, what you're describing. And, you know, oh, you know, what do you do? Because the point was, hey, guys, you don't know who's doing what. Yeah. Uh, whose fault we won't go into, but it was just scary. All right, so you're down, so you've gone from the highlands down south where it's hot as heck probably. Yeah, yes. it's hot, the soil. You know, rice paddies, all different. Um, no, they yeah, the didn't have rice paddies. Okay, I think the we soil was, wouldn't support wouldn't rice. Wouldn't support rice. But, the, you know, they had the watermelon fields, I saw. Okay. Um, not a lot of other crops. You know, okay. So it was a farm area. It was a farming yeah. area. And were you there for a month? I'm beginning to think, four you months. only got 24 months, Frank. Let's get you home. Let's okay. make you a civilian again. All right, yeah. Well, 12 months in Vietnam was about up by the time. Yes, yeah. okay. And so, you know, in September or October, on which... Uh, my time was up, so I, you know, flew back to on a freedom the US. bird. Yeah, You're on out a of freedom here. bird. Yeah, remember that. Yes. Uh, and then flew from, I think it was Travis, back to home. Well, that know. was a long journey. Oh, it was. Did, now uh, one of the things uh, I think people would be amazed at when we left when we left Vietnam, as soon as we got off the ground, the whole plane just broke out in cheers and yeah. yells and screams. Because, uh, like you, I, when I left Vietnam, I was getting discharged, and you knew it's over. Yeah. You got to land at Lewis and be whatever. So you now you come back to the USA discharged immediately. No. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, had to leave, and then uh, was assigned to Fort Knox. Okay, Tennessee. And, and um, it was kind of interesting there. What the have you doing there? Nothing. Oh, eleven, but you're still eleven Bravo. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What rank were you yeah. at that point? Uh, still an E four. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And. Um, you know, we so we're E4 Commons, we're in Play Coup to Common, Knights of Columbus giving away tits rolls. Frank, we're on a roll <laughs> yeah, here, right? Yeah. Okay, all right. So um, you, how, you're in Knox, how many months do you have left? Uh, it was almost five months. Oh, uh, so you had still a little yeah, time. I could have stayed in Vietnam a couple months and mm. got out. Nah, but, nah, uh, nah. 
I thought, no, I'm pushing my luck. I'm going to get out of here as soon as I can. As you look back upon it, good experience, bad experience, indifferent? Um, well, the good thing I got out of it, I, I got the GI Bill and, and got my paid for college. bachelor's degree. Yes, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, paid for my bachelor's and my wife and I's master's, so it was, uh -huh. it was a good deal, right? Yeah. It was a good deal. I say you E4, play coup. Uh, what, did you go right to college right after the military? Um, Took some time off? or? Uh, it was a little while before. Okay. You know, I met my wife, and she said, you need to go to college. So, <laughs> it's good mm -hmm. wife, good wife. Yeah. You, you did a good job. So she got me into college. And, good for uh, her. Uh, well, Frank, my situation was, remember how you had given, uh, do you remember they'd given early out if you got, a, if you had so many months left in the service, yeah. they'd let, if you got accepted to a university, they'd let you out. I, I was yeah, aware I mean, of that. Yeah, it was like 30 or 60 days. It was nothing. Yeah. Well, I left Vietnam on a Friday. Whenever I arrived at Fort Lewis, discharge, you know, somebody put on a record, some captain said, all right, be good till you get home. Landed in D.C. And the following Monday, I had to register at the University of yeah. Maryland. Talk about, I mean, you probably went, it's cultural. People don't understand. You go from a combat zone to a place where, wait a minute, the whole country's changed in the last three years. Yeah. Did you have a little cultural shock or not? Um, no, you know, at Chestertown, you didn't have yeah, that. Yeah, small uh, town. Small, small town. town. And... Um, you know, and then we went with a bunch of soldiers in, in Fort Knox. Okay. And we were kind of isolated. And I didn't see, you know, other people talk about, you know, people throwing yeah, stuff I never at had you. Any I never had any No, of that. I no. hear of people spitting. Nicest thing, my neighborhood, I lived in Montgomery County. Everybody in the neighborhood put up a sign, Welcome back, Fred. And, uh, no, it was uh, different than World War II or Korea or anything. But uh, I never, I agree with you. I never saw any of that. No. I know some poor guys did. And it was guys. Women weren't in combat roles in those days. But, uh, yeah, I got a few beers, yes. three beers. And that oh. was about, you know. And, you know, I went, I was, uh, one of the highlights, I got R&R. &R. Where would you go in R&R, &R, by the way? Um, Japan. Oh, you went to Japan? Uh, Tokyo yeah. or where? Um, no, it wasn't Tokyo. I forget the name Doesn't of the city. you're in Japan. Yeah. I mean, the nicest thing, uh, most GIs, halfway through your tour, you get to bid on Australia, mm -hmm. Japan, wherever it was, and you got a week where you're civilian. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was eating steaks every night, going to barbers and stuff like that, knowing when you went back, mm -hmm. you're, you're in the big muddy again, yeah. right? Which is good. Well, Frank, believe it or not, our time's about up, right? Okay. I'm sure yeah. I've totally messed up the time, but it doesn't <laughs> matter. Thank you for your service, and thank okay. you for coming. Thank you, I won't bug you anymore now, but when All you right. want me to sell, give out Tootsie Rolls, I'm there, okay? Okay. All right, you're committed now. Okay. I'm Fred McNeil. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your service. And any veteran would like to come on the show, please do so. And Frank and I, our time is up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time. And for all the veterans there, thank you for serving.